So our last and our final point that we need to do or that we were following with our strategy to find the pressure is to say, well, the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. Well, now that I have an expression for the force, which is the number of moles times the molar mass times the root mean velocity squared, squared divided by 3 times L, and with that, I'm going to multiply by 1 over A, or I'm going to divide by the area. And in this case, if I have the length of my box times the area of the face, and if I were to draw basically a picture of that, then there is the area And what I'm doing is I'm drawing a box. Then the area of that is just the area of that face, where the length of the box is the length, which is what I drawn before is my length. But the area now then defines, basically, if I have an area and I multiply it by a length, that gives me a volume. And so in the end, I can combine the L and the A, and basically then I'm just defining the area of or sorry, the volume of the box, which is containing my gas. And so this completes, then, the derivation for the pressure of an ideal gas in a box. Now, of course, this, this solution for the pressure of a gas inside a box is a little bit unsatisfactory because we have this root mean squared velocity squared term. And so what we'd like to do is to express this in something that's a little bit more intuitive and we want to try to understand sort of the pressure of a gas in a box. We want to relate it to, in this case, we're going to relate it to the temperature of the gas in the box, which is something that's, a, like I said, a, a little bit more intuitive to be able to measure. Now, fortunately for us, we can go back to the Maxwell distribution of speeds. And what we saw in that expression was that there was a relationship or if we wanted to find the the, the distribution of speeds, that was in relation to the temperature of the gas. So what we can do is we can go back to that Maxwell distribution of speeds and we can say, well, VRMS squared, or the average of the velocities, or the average of the square of the velocities, well, that can be determined by the Maxwell distribution of speeds. And how that happens is that because the Maxwell distribution of speeds gives us a probability of finding a vol of a particle traveling at a specific velocity, that if we wanted to find the average of that, then what that's equal to is the value itself. So in this case, since we're finding the average of the speed squared, then it's the speed squared times the probability of finding the particle at that speed. And in this case, I'm going to do the integral because if I'm going to find the average of something, I have to basically sum over all the potential values that this thing can take. And so if I follow through with this integral, I have 0 to infinity. Since I have to calculate all the speeds, I have the value that the speed can take. That's the v squared. The probability that it can be any speed, well, that's 4 pi capital M over 2 pi r times t to the power of 3 halves. I have another v squared times the exponent of negative m v squared over 2 r t dv. Now if I were to simplify this expression, the average of v squared, I can pull out a bunch of constants. I would get 4 pi capital M over 2 pi RT to the power of 3 halves. I get my integral of 0 to infinity. And what I'm left with is V to the power of 4 times the exponent of negative capital M V squared divided by 2 RT dV. And so what I have here is an integral where I mean, if I were to do this explicitly, I'd have to have, or I'd have to do integration by parts to at least with, the, with about four iterations because of this v to the power of four term. And this is something I would never expect you to do on an exam, and so I'm going to turn to Wolfram Alpha, and I can basically let it determine the solution to this definite integral. 
And the solution to this definite integral is actually something very simple. It's just 3RT over capital M. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take this expression, this 3RT times capital M, and I'm just going to just plug it right in for my VRMS squared, just because my VRMS squared is the same as the average of the velocity squared. And so what that allows me to do is then to write my pressure as N times capital M over 3 times V. And with that, I'm going to multiply by 3RT divided by capital M. And with that, I can cross off the capital M's and the 3's. And what I'm left with is NRT divided by V. Or, in other words, I get PV is equal to NRT. And so this astounding relationship that we've just determined is the ideal gas law. And how we found it was simply just by applying the kinetic model of gases, where again we had three assumptions. Particles are basically traveling in random motion. We have the fact that their diameters are so small that it takes a long time for them to collide with other things, and that their diameters are much smaller than the distance that they travel before they collide with something else. And finally, the third one is that we have particles where they don't interact with each other until they collide with each other. And based on just on those three simple assumptions, as well as understanding the distribution of speeds that a sample of gases can have, we can then determine the ideal gas law. As was just shown, the kinetic model of gases can be used to derive the pressure exerted by a sample of gas. If this is combined by the square of the root mean squared velocity of the gas calculated from the Maxwell distribution of speeds, then we can get the ideal gas law, which is equal to PV is equal to NRT, where P is the pressure, V is the volume, N is the number of moles, T is the temperature, and R is the gas constant. The gas constant has many values depending upon the units. Pay very close attention to the units of the value of the gas constant you use when performing calculations. Using the wrong value of R is a common mistake when solving problems, and it depends on the units of the other values plugged into the ideal gas law. Pay special attention to the units of the pressure, since it will typically be expressed in either kilopascals or atmospheres, and both have their own gas constant.